Hi guys and welcome to another quick riff lesson. Uh, this time we're going to have a look at Le Freak by Chic by the great guitarist on Niall Rogers. Um, before we get cracking, um, if you like the video, do hit the like button on the, my YouTube channel. Um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, you can also follow me via Facebook. All the links will be in the description. Okay. Um, this is probably the most classic disco riff ever. Um, it's all based around A minor, A minor seven, and it starts on a pickup. So it actually starts on the four and, so it goes one, two, three, four, like that. Um, the chord at the beginning there, you're simply barring across um, the fifth fret from strings one to four. So, you're gonna get that. Um, that gives you an A minor seven chord. So that happens on the four end, and then on beat one, you're gonna strum it again. And you're gonna kind of hit it on the down, and then you're gonna do a miss down and hit on the up. So you get a kind of a like that. Incidentally, when you play the first chord, as soon as you've hit it, relax your finger and let it cut right off. And that's going to give it that nice choppy sound. Like that. Okay, so um, that's beat one. And then on beat two, he does this little um, hammer on. So, incidentally, this whole thing when I'm playing it, it's, um, even though there's some single notes there, I'm basically just strumming constantly down up with the pick and I'm relying on my left hand to mute off any of the unwanted strings. So even when I'm playing a single note, um, I'm, I'm still just strumming the strings. And that helps keep you in the groove and it gives you the right sort of sound as well for this sort of riff. So, so even when I do this, it's only on two strings. On fifth fret on the third and fourth strings. And what I do is I just slightly lift the bar to mute off the first and second strings. So you hit the chord, and then you do a hammer on to fret seven on the D string. So you get that. Okay, then on beat three, basically just keeping that bar there, um, it's not super important that you hit just two strings. I'm, I hear it that it is only hearing, you're only hearing the B and the G strings. But I suspect that what's happening is he's just holding the bar and that's just what you happen to hear at the time. But that's on the, um, so you get a down up strum. That's on the B and G strings at the fifth fret. And then he's back to that seventh fret on the D. And again, just letting the, the hand mute it off. Like that. Probably something else that you might find useful is that I actually use my little finger to play these the A note on, on, the, um, on the seventh fret there. And it allows me to use my other fingers to mute off the other strings. So even though I'm, I'm hitting a lot of the strings, I'm only hearing the one note. Like that. 
really helps to, to do, the, do the trick for that, if you know what I mean. And then um, on beat four, down strum, again, I'm hearing just the third and fourth strings at the fifth fret. But it's not super important, you can hit three strings, it doesn't matter. It's basically hitting the chord. Uh, so a down strum and then another down strum back on that A note. And again, letting the, uh, the rest of the fingers mute off the other strings so you get like that. So you're getting that sort of effect. Okay, um, on the second bar, a little bit simpler. He's basically just barring a, a, a small D chord just on the second, third, and fourth strings at the seventh fret. And you're just gonna go down, then relax the chord, go down, and then press the chord down and go up. So you get this. Like that, okay? Then on beat two, uh, it's just on the second half of beat two, he hits another down on that chord. So it sounds like this. That's the spacing. Then he goes down to the fifth fret, basically barring a C chord on strings two, three, and four again. This time I'm using my first finger. And we're gonna do the same sort of thing. We're gonna go down and then mute on a down and then hit on an up. Like that. And then on the second half of beat four, he holds the whole four strings down, which is basically um, the pickup for the next time round. So this is on second half of beat four, on the fifth fret, on strings one to four, giving you that A minor seven chord that we had at the start. And that just kind of brings the whole thing round. So that bar sounds like this. Like that. If I loop it round, you're gonna get this. And then, it can, and then it'll carry on round. Again, you know, he pretty much plays that through the verse as well, being honest with you, um, with a few variations. Talking about some of the things that he does, uh, one of the times I heard him do this at the end, so he goes, goes down to the C, and then he adds his finger onto the seventh fret, and you're gonna end up with an A minor nine chord. And this happens on the second half of beat three. And then he plays this little shape, like a G sus4, um, you're playing on 8th fret on the E, 8 on the B, 7 on the G. Some people might, if you're relating it back to A minor, I think it comes out as a minor 11. I just think it's a nice shape, <laughs> it sounds good. Uh, so if I put that together, that kind of goes. So the rhythm on that, um, down on the A minor nine, and then he does a, a muted down, followed by pressing down on, a, on an up. So you get that sort of thing. Like that. Uh, in context of the whole riff, So it's just something he throws in every now and again. Um, so he doesn't do it every time, but uh, judicially, if you like, he does it now and again. Um, okay, and essentially that's the riff. I, I hope this all makes perfect sense to you and I hope you have a lot of fun with it. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Have fun. <laughs>